Hello and welcome to Point of View, the Tuesday edition of Point of View. Here I am Josh Barnes and this is Justin Barnes joining me as usual for our Tuesday live stream where we look at politics from a biblical Christian worldview. And that is the only way to be right about issues is to be biblical about issues because we know that the Bible is true and therefore it is the foundation for all of our understanding about what is right and what is wrong. Makes a big difference. And today we want to talk about the Equality Act. Um, Joe Biden, who assumes himself to be President-elect Joe Biden, uh, has stated very clearly that one of the things that he wants to do immediately upon getting into office is to fully enforce the Equality Act. Now, <clears throat> the Equality Act, um, we will dive into the problems with that and why that should concern Christians. And also, how he's going to try to enforce this is another question we're going to talk about. But before we get there, I want to read to you uh, one of the comments we got on the show last week. And if you're watching today, or whenever you watch, even if it's uh, not live, we do have these up on YouTube. You can do a YouTube search for Point of View with Josh Barnes, <clears throat> uh, or with Josh and Justin Barnes, and you'll find, uh, find us on YouTube. Or you can find us very easily on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash POV with JB, POV with JB. Um, and you'll find us very easily there. And you can find all of our shows are going to be shared right there on Facebook. It'd be easy to get to the YouTube page and everything from there. So however you're watching, whether it's live or whether you're watching the recording after the fact, go ahead and put your comments in because if now not every comment are we going to respond to. But every now and then, we'll find one that's just a really good um, or a really thoughtful comment. And we really want to uh, give you the chance to be, to have the same platform, right? To get your thoughts out. So I got a, I got a, a, a comment from a um, Canadian uh, person, <laughs> which doesn't make them any worse. It just may not make them any better than us as Americans. Um, <laughs> but uh, the comment comes from Wendigo63 uh, on YouTube, who says this, Thank you for posting this, and I say to that, you're welcome. I found the discussion interesting, um, they say, and they said, I th said this, I perceive that you equate the Republicans with Christian goodness and the Democrats with evil, which I find disturbing, as long as you, USA collectively plan to refight abor ab the abortion debate forever. You are taking bandwidth away from other things. Example, dragging your 18th century government system into the modern world. Why do we have uh, 50 times 100 different processes involved in the federal election because of all the different counties? And it's high from Canada. So essentially what a Wendigo is saying, if, if I understand their post correctly, is you are placing the emphasis on the wrong things. You're saying that Christ, that uh, Republicans are uh, re reflect Christian goodness and Democrats reflect evil, uh, and you're focusing on <clears throat> this, this fight between Republicans and Democrats, and you're focusing on this um, fight about moral issues like abortion instead of focusing on actually getting your country to be able to uh, have an election <laughs> like competently, which I understand is definitely, especially if you're in another country and you're looking at America right now, you're probably just like, what a mess. And I think those of us who are in America think that as well. But Justin, what would your, uh, what would your, what is your first thoughts reading that <coughs> comment? Um, I think, I think it was at least well thought through that they made some, they made some points that they were trying to uh, make. Do we, or maybe we appear this way, but I'm sure that the goal here is not to reflect to um, equate Republicans with Christian goodness. Am I right? Yeah, so I'm going to give the commenter the benefit of the doubt here that maybe they haven't listened to a lot of us because um, I don't know anyone that would be able to, in good conscience, accuse me of equating the Republicans with Christianity. Um, I have very often called out President Trump, for example, um, as deeply immoral on a lot of issues. Um, personally, uh, some of the things he said, some of the things that he's done, I, some of the things he to this day still supports, I do not support, I do not believe are biblical. So no, the Republican Party does not equal the, the Bible, the Christianity Party. That's not what we're saying. 
Um, I think that there's a lot of things that Republicans have absolutely caved on and capitulated on uh, when it comes to things that are biblical. I, I don't see anyone really pushing back against homosexuality, for example, and that is important. However, when we're talking about biblical worldview and biblical values, we have to keep in mind that one side supports at least some biblical values, and the other side is actively trying to uh, make biblical values illegal. And we're about to get into that, but when we say that we are pro certain Republicans, it's because we're pro the promotion of at least some biblical values and some biblical worldview, rather than destroying the entire biblical foundation this country was built on. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So you can't, be, just because we end up siding mostly with the Republicans, because the Republicans side more often with the Bible, doesn't mean that we are chiefly Republicans. We are chiefly uh, Biblicists. We are chief, chiefly um, in, concerned with Scripture. And with looking at issues from the point of view of Scripture, you tend to side more with Republicans than Democrats, in, in, uh, at least currently. This may not, this is certainly not a universal truth for all times, but it just seems to be the case um, right now. So, and, but Justin, what about the point that, that uh, and I want to say she, just because Wendigo, to me, sounds like a female, but I don't, I'm not sure who, uh, if, I don't want to insult whoever this is. Uh, this is, this is, by the way, how YouTube comments work. You don't actually see the name. So he or she, uh, and by the way, you, our YouTube channel's, pretty new that we've had the show for almost a year now but the youtube channel is very new so if you're watching on youtube you like the content give us a little subscribe um it, it's it, it's a little subscribe but it goes a long way give us a like uh, uh, and you'll see more of our videos populating uh, on your uh, homepage there on youtube that way you can see us every time we come on and uh we, we certainly appreciate that but um so what about the point that was made here about abortion? Should, should abortion not be the main issue for Christians? I think abortion really, if it's not the main issue, it's got to be equal to the main issue, issue, right? Well, I mean, concerning who you're going to vote for, yeah, that's got to be top tier, shared by maybe one or two other issues, but abortion has to be right at the top of the priority list when it comes to voting. Now, I will concede that, yes, when you give focus to one thing very heavily, you are going to take bandwidth, if we want to use that terminology, away from being able to address other issues. That's the fact of the matter is there's only so much time in the day. You only have so much energy and effort. It has to go somewhere. So if other people want to focus on other issues, that's perfectly fine with me. But being abortion is such a grave and I think probably the greatest evil that humanity has come up with yet. I mean, this, uh, I'm going to say this, and I will not apologize for it, this is worse than the Holocaust. By numbers, yeah. statistically, it's worse than the Holocaust. By the fact that we're taking away the lives of people who haven't even had the chance to draw breath yet, have not had any experience, these are the most innocent among us, and we are saying we're going to snuff them out. Um, this is important. And if yeah. you're not willing to stand up against this, you would not have been one of the people standing up in Nazi Germany to defend the Jews. Yeah. Th this, is, this is the fact of the matter. This is, this is that issue for our day. If you're not willing to stand up for the unborn, you wouldn't have stood up for um, African Americans during slavery. You wouldn't exactly. have. This is, this is the issue of our day. This is what we have to stand up for. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the equivalent of somebody in the, um, in the 19th century saying, I don't know why you have to focus so much on freeing the slaves. I mean, there's so many other yeah. more important things to talk about. And I would think, uh, well, yeah, there's other important things to talk about, but that doesn't mean that we should be okay with, um, with people owning other people. This is not okay, and we should cry out against it until it's, it's stopped. And this is how you can tell whether or not you would have been one of the people standing up for... Uh, the rights of slaves in the 1800s, or yeah, in the 1800s, is are you doing that for the equivalent today? So the fact that you stand up for slavery is bad today proves nothing. It's a popular view now. That's the majority view is slavery bad. Are you willing to stand up for the people who don't have the voice today? And that would be the unbold. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're willing to do that now, you probably would have been on the right side back then. If you don't today, you wouldn't have stood up for him back then either. Yeah, and once again, we're brought back to the essential question. Is abortion murder? Scientifically, biblically, 
we know that it is. There's no other scientific term for it besides murder. It is the taking of a biologic, biological life for no reason, right? Without cause. That is murder. Biblically, we know it's murder. We, we've gone through this. You can go check out our videos on the, on the subject. So if it is murder, then it is a big deal. I mean, we are legalizing yeah. murder um, and calling it okay and convincing mothers that it's not murder. This is this, this is a big deal, right? However, um, there are other things to deal with. And well, actually, one, one, thing. Of, one of the things that confuses me about Wendigo's comment actually is in that video, I don't think we even mentioned abortion. And though abortion is huge, we deal with a lot of different issues on this on this channel and on this uh, on the show. Um, so it, it surprises me uh, that the the impression was given that abortion is the only thing that we're willing to talk about. Well, the the fact of the matter is, though, abortion addresses other grave issues in our time. Because why is abortion here? Well, because people want to have unfettered sexual relations. They want to have an unfettered sex life. So if they want to do that, there's only a few other options. You know, either use something before to stop conception or... Once conception happens, oopsies, it happened, kill the baby. So what we're talking about is actually, if you step back, there's other fundamental moral issues at, at the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. America has lost its sexual morals. It's not, right. it, there is no anchor for anything sexual in America anymore. So since that is the case already, now abortion. See, the, the, the thing is, abortion is the evil several steps down the road from the evil we already started with. Right. This is this is a conclusion. This is like in Romans one, where you see they did not worship God, they did not acknowledge Him, and so God gave them up, and suddenly all this other stuff starts happening. That's where we are. We already have the evil of unfettered sexual immorality, and several steps down the road, now we have abortion. Right. So abortion is a really bad extreme of the sexual liberty that people want to have. Exactly. And so with that in mind, we want to talk about the Equalities Act. And this is what we do here on Point of View. If you're brand new, and again, I tell this, and, and some people don't don't believe, don't believe say I'm just saying it to, uh, to make stuff up, you know, for, for to make it sound good. But no, literally every week, I'm getting people, I'm hearing about people who listen to it for the first time this week. And um, so if you're, if you're brand new, bear with us because we're not a single issue uh, channel, we try to take a look at, at multiple issues and do them all from a biblical point of view, a biblical perspective. On Mondays, we actually go with go to whatever's popular, whatever, whatever's in the news, and we talk about that on Mondays. And on Tuesdays, we kind of deal with something that's in the news, but that's more of a general issue, right? A, a, a broad issue. And today, we're talking about the Equality Act. Now, this is in the news because so-called president-elect um, Joe Biden, former Vice President Joe Biden, has promised that if he is president, um, he is going to fully enforce the Equality Act. Let me read you just a little excerpt from a story. Uh, this story is from, uh, let's see if I can find uh, the right um, page here. Okay, ChristianHeadlines.com. And this says, uh, Biden pledges passage and full enforcement of the LGBT, LGBT Equality Act in his first 100 days in office. So Democrat presidential nominee Joe Biden says in an uh, interview that if, he, if, if elected, he would prioritize passage of the Equality Act. Now, this, this story, um, it says if elected, uh, this was back in October uh, 29th. So this was just before the election. Now, we're still not sure if he was elected. Uh, I would say that he definitely was not, but he still may be president. We'll see. Uh, however, um, he says that he will, within his first 100 days, he would prioritize passage of the Equality Act. This is a bill that has sparked concern from religious liberty groups over its impact and from some LGBT activists over its effect on female sports. Um, Biden told the Philadelphia Gay News in an, in, in an interview that he wants to see the Equality Act passed and signed into law during his first 100 days in office. The Democrat-controlled House passed it last year, that's 2019, but the GOP-led Senate never brought it up for a vote. A spokesman for President Trump said last year 
that the bill in its current form is filled with poison pills that threaten to undermine per parental and conscience rights. Of course, we know that Biden has said that children ought to be ought to be allowed to choose their gender. Uh, I almost said irregardless. Oh, don't ever let me say irregardless on this show. Um, regardless of what their parents want, um, these children are going to, this is what Biden wants. Biden wants children to be able to choose their gender regardless of, of, of what their parents want. Um, this is a huge deal. It, this is a big deal. So the Equality Act had, was was turned down in the Senate. Actually, it was never even brought up for a vote in the Senate on purpose because it's a terrible, terrible bill that actually forces so-called equality, but essentially it has huge ramifications on Christians. Right, Justin? Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, the Equality Act is... It, it would be kind of the beginning of the end for the church in America. This is this is laying the foundation for every sort of of lawsuit and legal action against anyone who dares to take a biblical perspective on uh, sex, sex and sexuality. Uh, by sex, I mean like biological sex and sexuality. What what you uh, your orientation, as we would call it these days. Um, this this is laying the foundation for for going after Christians on everything. Um, and if you don't believe me, look at Norway and what they passed this past week. I don't know if you heard about that, but Norway passed a bill um, that makes biphobic, transphobic, and, and all that sort of stuff, speech illegal. And get this, in private conversations, if you say something that is deemed hate speech against one of these groups, you get at le you can get up to a year of prison. Wow. For a private For a private conversation. conversation. If you say something in your home and that gets out, you can go to jail for a year. If you don't think that's where this is headed, that is exactly where this is headed. That yeah. is exactly where the Equality Act is leading, is what they did in Norway. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Equality Act is basically, we want to root out every last semblance of biblical worldview on this issue in in our country. Yeah, so if you Here. have a biblical worldview, if you believe that God created, God created the male and female, right? <laughs> Uh, if you believe just the, es the essential teaching about human beings that's in Scripture, that there's men and women, right? <laughs> that they are two different genders, are two different sex. Um, you, this is the opposite of what the Equality Act uh, is meant for. Here's here's a uh, a story from the Gospel Coalition back last year when the Equality Act was, was uh, up for vote in the House. And uh, they walked through it, and here's what they said. The Equality Act would amend two landmark civil rights laws, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Fair Housing Act, to change the definition of sex instead of the term being solely in reference to biological men and women. It would also cover sexual orientation or gender identity for the purposes of employment, housing, public accommodate, accommodation, jury service, education, and federal programs. According to the bill, the term sexual orientation means homosexuality, heterosexuality, or bisexuality, and gender identity means the gender-related identity, appearance, mannerisms, or other gender-related characteristics of an individual, regardless of the individual's de designated sex at birth. So what they want to do is say these act, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, that that said that you you cannot, as an employer or or in certain in, in any type of situation like that, you cannot discriminate against someone based on their race or their sex. Which means you can't say, well, because you're a woman, uh, but you have the same qualifications as this man, but you're a woman and he's a man, I'm not going to give you the job, right? But in the same at the same time, they want to say, well, that sex can also refer to sexual orientation. So now they want to say, you can't discriminate against someone for this position just because they are a transgendered person or just because they are a homosexual or whatever. And now you're, you're talking about churches and other uh, 
religious organizations that are going to have are going to be forced uh, or going to be sued in in a court of law for not hiring someone who's participating in actions that are contrary to their beliefs. Yeah, and if you don't think that churches are are involved in this one, you haven't heard Kamala Harris speak on this issue cuz she said that freedom of religion is just your freedom to have whatever religious beliefs you want, not your freedom to act on it in any way, shape, or form, basically. Uh, she said that churches shouldn't be allowed to, to hide behind freedom of religion to discriminate. So if you believe the biblical teaching on sexuality and human biology, then then you ought to have action taken against you because that's not freedom of religion. Freedom of religion is only individual, not any sort of corporate corporate entity, yeah, uh, which it's, you could loosely call a church. It's also really important that the word education is, is slipped in there. It says it would also cover sexual orientation or gender identity for the purposes of employment, housing, public accommodation, jury service, education, and federal programs. The fact that education is slipped in there is huge that what what that's saying is that you you can't tell a transgendered man who's coming to school at and and wants to teach teach your kids at school you can't tell him that he can't teach your kids at school that's that's discrimination that is is going to be against the law under a biden administration this is absolutely disgusting we have these drag queen story hours that are awful just terrible and it's now going to be if if biden gets his way illegal to discriminate against the drag queen story hour yeah and um <laughs> and all of this by the way from the party of science yeah um keep in mind these are the people who say we believe the science no you don't you don't even know what a woman is in your party like that's the thing is so ironic is that this is the party so supposedly of feminism Yet feminists are get taking one on the jaw here because now, well, a guy can be a girl. So really, there's no nothing special about being a girl because anyone can be that if they they feel like that. So, so what's special about being a girl? And and what what is a woman after all? Anyways, I mean, th there's no definition for what like this this everything that they have here is completely contradictory. They can't hold transgenderism and homosexuality. Why? Because if someone is a boy. Uh, and he's attracted to boys, but then he becomes a girl. Is did he just change his sexual orientation? Which I've been told is a mutable characteristic. Uh, you, you, none of this is coherent. None of it yeah. works together. This is not a working, functioning brain. None of this makes any sense. But this is exactly to to bring this full circle. This is Romans one. God gives them over to a debased mind. That they're they're just gone nuts. Their minds are not functioning right now all they know is they hate god yeah that is the foundation of this they hate god and they don't want anything to do with him well and i'm really disappointed in biden because biden has said repeatedly that he will listen to scientists and this is the opposite of science this, this is absolute rejection of actual science okay there is a male and there is a female and not only that when you when you disregard the difference between a male and a female you are saying that you are you are reducing the value of both okay women this this has been said will absolutely destroy women's sports because when you can't discriminate against somebody to play in a, on a, on women's sports who is a man they just call themselves a woman then women's sports is going to be gone there will be no women's sports anymore I think women's sports you've is a got, good thing. You've got men out there breaking women's jaws in fighting sports and stuff like that because they're so much more powerful than them. This is not just – it's not just that women can't – actual women can't win anymore. It's that they're getting killed by these people, not a little bit hype, hyperbolic there. But they're, they're getting beat – they're getting the stuff and beat out of them by men pretending that they're women. And by the way, who knows if this is going to get taken down from whatever site we're on yeah. because <laughs> – Frankly, this is this is this in Norway. I get jail for this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'm sure Norway will block fairly. this video. <laughs> yeah, because this is this is this is no not a private conversation. Um, but here's here's my question. And, and under Justin. the Equality Act, what we are doing is illegal. Here here's some something that I can imagine some people may try to give us as pushback. So I'm going to try to anticipate your comments 
uh, before you even make them, or maybe after, maybe you've already made them as I'm talking. But um, but I anticipate someone saying, but but shouldn't Christians be loving and be accepting and want equality for people, even people who are who are not acting in accordance with with the word of God, shouldn't they still want those people to be treated equally under the law? And and so, Justin, if you could give us some, some scriptural verses why we believe what we believe, and then tell us why we should, why equality is, you know, are, are we against equality here for these people? Okay, so there are, a, I could go on that question not kidding for an hour. But let me just summarize a few highlights here. Number one, um, we have always been about equality under the law, but that doesn't mean that the law should include anything anyone wants to do. So back before Obergefell, homosexual people and heterosexual people had the same rights. So I could marry any girl that I wanted to, and a gay guy could marry any girl he wanted to. We had the same rights. The law was not discriminating against us. Secondly, when we talk about loving people, the first command for Christians is to love God and then to love people. We do not understand what it means to love people correctly if we do not love God correctly. Love for God means I want his honor, his glory, and his law to be upheld. His law clearly states homosexuality is a sin. Transgenderism is is rebellion against the God-ordained uh, gender binary that he's given us. So. I love God first and seek his glory, and then out of that I can see how to love my fellow man. It is not – it does not lead to a prospering human human uh, civilization. Human flourishing is not something that happens under this radical sexual perversion. That's that's not the case. In, in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter in the Bible, it says that love does not rejoice in iniquity. And if God says that this is iniquity, then if I rejoice with them over the sexual sin, I do not love them by definition. So no, and I, again, I could keep going on. I'm going to let you get back in here. But no, none of that make that that is an absolutely, utterly uh, bankrupt objection to this in every way, shape or form. Yeah. And personally, I challenge the very first word of the name equality. I don't think this promotes equality at all. Yeah. I don't think it's equal to 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 say that anybody uh, can reverse reality, and there is no distinction between any person. You're you're. It's not. I don't think it's equal to say that there is no difference between anybody. I think it's equal to say that even though we are different, we all have the same opportunity. Right. So even though I'm different from a woman, I have the opportunity to try to participate in in pro football. Now, I will definitely fail. Like, you know me, Justin. I will fail miserably at that. But I have the opportunity to do it as I have the equal opportunity that uh, that a woman does to try to participate in, in, in football. However, I advise women to participate in women's sports because they have better opportunity that way. They don't, don't, don't really have an opportunity with, in a men's football league. Does that make sense? So I don't think it's equal to say, okay, the men are going to participate now in the women's league and you can't stop them. And now the women are basically shoved out and they have no equal opportunity because now they can't they can't even participate in their own league because they're going to be destroyed that's not an equal opportunity that is the opposite of equality i think that what yeah. this does is destroy equality so the idea that we're against equality because we're against the equalities act is actually not true we want people to have this equal opportunity and the equalities act destroys that by saying there's no difference between people. People are different. We should celebrate our differences. And, uh, and of course, when I say we celebrate our differences, I, I don't think we should celebrate sinful differences, right? That's not, I'm not saying and, celebrate sin, but when, but because people are different, that doesn't mean that we change giving each person an equal opportunity. We just don't give them all the equal outcome. People don't have equal outcomes. That doesn't happen. I'm not going to succeed at football. I'm just never going to be there. No, you won't. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. If it, uh, let, let's go with this whole idea of equality. Do we want equal things? No. I. It's my assertion that the entire LGBTQ, RSTUV, WXY, and Z community plus um, 
they don't want equal rights. They want super hyper rights. They want extraordinary rights. They want rights beyond everyone else. And I can prove that. Because if you disagree with someone who considers themselves transgender on a fundamental assertion, then it is hate speech. Fundamental assertion. This biological male is a female. I disagree. Hate speech. I, I can explain my disagreement. Hate speech. Yet someone comes up to me, a Christian, one of my fundamental assertions, there is a god. Atheist comes up, you don't believe in that space meatball wizard, do you? Oh, the sky fairy, you guys. There's no such thing as a god. You're idiots. You're, you're rubes. You bunch of dumb hicks. That's not hate speech. Yeah. And now here's the thing. I never <laughs> want that to be hate speech. Exactly. You're allowed to be as incoherent as you want to be. But if that's not hate speech, then me saying that a biological male is not a female is not hate speech either. That is what equality looks like. They don't want equality. Christians are treated far worse in this country than um, transsexual, homo hom homosexual, all those types of different groups. And yeah. we don't, we're not going around running and screaming and crying hate speech and trying to shut everyone down. We say you have the right we're trying to engage to on, the, on, the, on the battle. Because we can actually engage. We can reason through this. We can go to battle on the data and evidence. Transgenderism, homosexuality can't. They can't. So they, they just have, have to nothing. shut you down. The only way for them to they win to is to shut the, down They opposition. have to use the law because they cannot argue it. Exactly. Exactly. And there's so much more to be said. I, yeah. I'm actually... There is there's like two or three things that I me meant to say while you were rant while not rant while you were ranting there for a second. Oh, I ranted. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I almost said ramble. I'm like, no, that's not good. R rant is better. <laughs> but I completely forgot what they were, and I'm not going to remember in time because we're already two minutes over time. So we're gonna we're gonna end it there, and we may pick up the same topic later. Put your comments in the comment box. We will uh, discuss your comments uh, on the next Tuesday show, and we'll see you next time on Point of View.